So I'm just going to take a ruler guide to set out right down in the middle of this graphic uh, window and just make sure you go under view for guides and show them. So it shows up right here and you can change the color of them but just to get you st started there you can see that see that piece. And again this is the part where you can dim down the image so you can see what's happening. So he has a letter a E and the G kind of s almost like a symmetrical piece <clears throat> for that. So I'm just going to take the pen tool. If your tools on your toolbar you can minimize them in, an, in a line. You can click on it to make it a double-headed piece, and then down below it has some of the options and uh, showing all the tools, everything that you have here, and selecting advanced will get you to that to that level. So I'm just going to hit the foreground and the background and take off the fill <coughs> and just take a look at this and start trying to analyze exactly what he has here so I can at least get started. Remember when you click you can still hold the spacebar down and then let go and it allow you to uh, build that section up. So this one I'm just going to use the pen tool here. Make sure it goes right to the center piece and that will give me that, that guide. <coughs> and again using the keystroke you can build that part up just so you can see the image for it a little better. The uh, purple lines are the smart guides, and that's letting you see what's happening. So just make sure nothing's selected, but it'll let you click on there in order to illustrate this piece. So trying to look at the positive piece, if he has a curve to it, just remember to set the curve and click on the anchor point to bring it back. And here's going to line up to this one and up at the top. So it gives you uh, at least a segment to start off with. <coughs> now for the shading or the shadows, I'm not sure exactly the details, so it's something that you as the designer come back to. So I'm going to kind of build this up, maybe make it into one piece just to start off with. <coughs> and here I'm just going to make this shape so I can cut it out and make it a different color. <coughs> And taking a look at these pieces. So I'm trying to overlap these on purpose because I'm going to use the shape builder to, to build these out. And I'm coming over on this side. So here I'm kind of going behind the text. Right on this point here. So I'm just curving it. So I'm doing a lot of overlapping just to make sure. So now I have all this part. I'm just going to select it all. And again, the Shape Builder tool will allow me to um, <coughs> work within this. So the tricky part is just trying to see what's, what's going where and what's on top of what. So when you connect these, they become one, one piece again because I had the initial shape. And then here's the shadow parts. So if you click click it with the plus sign, at least it makes it into a shape. <clears throat> this I'm connecting these two. And over here I'm connecting these two. And this one I just click on in order to make that a separate a separate piece. So I'll try to show that. And there's presets. When you double click these tools, each of them gives you a setup of all the different options. So you you want to take a look at those as you go through this. So right now I'm using the separate color to build that piece up and then here's a here's a piece. So now I have all these parts. <clears throat> when I move this, you'll see that those are the pieces left behind. If I stretch these across you can see them. I just undo them to bring them back. So now it's a matter of what you do with these <coughs> with these uh, shapes and what colors you make them. So I'm just kind of going in here and making it a, a couple pieces, but that's one option that you have. <coughs> just putting that together. And then the other, other place is that you can start to use the gradients. 
for example, here's the, uh, the shape with the fill is in the front. I can click on a gradient and it'll set this preset. And down below you'll see in this swatches panel, you'll see some of these gradients that are here. As you're trying to make a, a, a wise color choice as you go through it, and uh, clicking down in here to the gradients, you'll get all these different menus and options for different color palettes. So as soon as you click on one of these, it'll show up in your image, but it'll also show up in your swatches. And then the arrow next to it will send you through the different color choices that you have to, to build those up. So you can click on a bunch, you can drag the folders in there, and then you'll have these items to work with. <clears throat> and you can edit these. There's a tool, looks like a little gradient that looks like this one. And when you click on that, what happens is that whatever item I have selected shows me the gradient from left to right with all the color stops that are there. And depending on which one you grab, I grab the end handle of it. It lets me move the gradient. I can rescale it. Okay. When you come outside of it, it'll let you rotate it too as well. But this is just giving you a straight piece for it. And you can also stretch it across inside here to make a make a piece from that. So it's kind of a nice uh, selection tool. Here's another piece I do with the gradient selected here. I can just adjust the coloring on this part. <clears throat> and again, just moving the whole section of it. So it goes from light to dark. These are color stops in between that make a crisper edge to it. You can kind of see that part. You can re-drag re it in there. So it's trying to give you a little bit of uh, introduction to all the different coloring pieces. When you're done with it, just uh, turn this off, hide the grid under View, um, Show Grid and High Grid as a keystroke, and then the Tab key again, which allows you to get in and make the, and try to have nothing selected when you do this, so that you can make a nice clean, clean shot of that. Okay.